All right, in today's episode, we're going to talk about the eight best exercises for strong and, yes, toned arms. Let's get to it. Dude, let's first address what I just said. Yes, yeah. let's address uh, toned arms. Justin has toned arms. Yeah. Yeah. A tone. <laughs> yeah, it's just one singular tone. No, toned is uh, so that we have somebody that, that gives us ideas for uh, titles that'll get more engagement. And this was one of the titles they suggested. And I, we like the episode of eight best exercises, but toned is a made-up word. Yeah, but I want I want to make something clear about that too. In the in Jeremy's defense, who's responsible for uh, sending titles and episode ideas over to us now, um, I use that in my even as a trainer who understood that, like because I understood because it's common vernacular. Yes, right? yes because my clients understood that, and so there was a there was a period Jeremy of time respond better to that. Word. Well, there was a per- there was a period of time as a trainer where I wanted to show you how smart I was that yeah. there's no yeah. such thing as tone; it's a made up word. And all we're really doing is building muscle or losing body fat. That's what equals that. So it's that, that needed to be that guy. Yeah. And then there was a part of me who realized, like, man, this is how everybody communicates right. or defines what they what they think is toned. And so instead of me being that guy, sure, I just I would use that. And so when I would be communicating to my my especially my female clients, that's typically who ask for toned arms. I'd explain to them, listen, what we're gonna do. We're gonna first. We're going to build muscle. We're going to focus on speeding your metabolism up. And then we're going to lean out, lose body fat. And you're going to see that tone look you're looking for in your arms. Yeah. So I would communicate that way, even though I knew that it's a, a made up word. Yeah. What, I mean, what's happening with your, your arms when they feel harder, that's what tone means, right? People, oh, it feels harder. Sculpted would be kind of lean. Toned is the feeling. They're just building. They're just building to a smaller degree. So toning uh, is the same as building. And so the exercises that we're going to talk about um, today are the ones that in our experience training people for over two decades, um, not just training people, but training trainers, uh, running gyms. Um, uh, these are the best exercise. These are the ones that give you the most bang for your buck. And that's what you want, right? When you go to the gym and you work out, even if you love spending time at the gym, most people would pick a more effective routine over another. And part of what makes a routine effective besides sets and reps and programming, which is all very important, are the exercises, right? Those are the actual ingredients. And some exercises are just really, really good at building muscle or sculpting or toning and other exercises, not as much. So we pick the eight best ones. I also want to address, even though this is about the exercises, right? Which we'll get to yeah. and listen. I want to make it very clear too, though, that when we do these incredible exercises for building and toning your arms, it's also very important that you feed your body correctly in order to repair, build, strengthen, adapt, yeah. and get that muscle. Yeah. Good luck building if you don't have the what it takes, the and, materials. And, yeah. and so the materials. Why, why this is so important to communicate is because so many of my clients that wanted toned arms were also the clients that also wanted to lose 30 pounds of body fat or lean out. And so they felt like they had flabby arms, they had a little bit of a belly, and it's like, hey, I want to lose this body fat and I want to have toned arms. And the actual definition of toning is building muscle in that mm-hmm. area, losing body fat. And it's always more advantageous for us to build muscle first to build the metabolism up and then lean out to lose the body. Yeah, it makes losing the body fat so much easier. So if you if you are somebody who feels like you have flabby arms and you want toned arms, the first thing we need to do is to build muscle, mm-hmm. okay? Build our arms, uh, which may result in you staying the same weight, maybe even going up a tiny few pounds on the scale, which is really scary for some people to hear. But ultimately, we are going to be building muscle and building your metabolism, and then we're going to lean out, and that's mm-hmm. going to give you what that that tone totally. look that you're trying to desire. Hundred percent. Yeah, great point. Um, all right. So, so before we get into the exercises, um, let's talk about the the categories uh, of exercise or why we pick the ones that we picked. Now, the first thing is to talk about um, compound lifts. So for people who aren't familiar, a compound lift is a lift that utilizes more than one joint during the lift. So you're using two joints. For example, a push-up would be a compound exercise because it's my shoulder and my elbow joint. A, a single joint exercise or isolation exercise would be the other category of exercises. And these are ones that essentially just move one joint. So a compound lift for my shoulders, for example, would be an overhead press, elbows and shoulders. An isolation uh, exercise or single joint exercise for my shoulders would be like a lateral raise. Now, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because when we talk about the big, especially the, 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 the muscles of the trunk, but also even the legs, 
when we talk about the best exercises, everybody knows, generally speaking, that compound lifts are just better, right? A, a, a barbell squat, for example, is going to build your quads better than a leg extension. Why? Because a barbell squat, among other things, is a compound lift. If I talk about the chest, for example, a bench press is going to develop your chest more than a cable fly. Why? Because, among other things, the bench press is a compound lift. So this is true for all the muscles until we get to the arms. And for some reason, people don't realize or consider compound lifts for the arms, especially the biceps. And this just isn't true. There are phenomenal uh, compound lifts for the arms, and it's really in how you perform them. And we're going to talk about some of those exercises. Um, we also talk about elbow position. This is also very important. Uh, how do I know which exercises to pick from? Well, it's not just which exercises. It's also which exercises you combine in a workout. And really the most important thing to consider when you're working your arms out, when you're looking at different exercises, is your elbow position. And mm -hmm. I don't mean in inside, you know, close to your body and, 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 you know, coming out, but rather next to your body, in front of you, or overhead. And there's exercises that work all those different elbow positions. Then we have tension points, which we'll get to. And then hand position, which really matters for biceps, not so much. I feel like the compound lifts is the biggest point of contention yeah. with, with the bros, especially, uh, and which I don't really understand. But I, I understand to the point of, uh, you know, isolation exercises and their worth. And this is sort of the realm of like I'm trying to build and sculpt, you know, very specific um and develop very specific muscle groups. However, there's a lot you can gain in terms of muscle uh, when you work just exclusively on compound lifts. And to deny that fact is pretty hilarious. To me. There's a couple of reasons why, by the way. Yeah. One is uh, people would say with the overall tension yep. uh, on the muscle. So, you know, if I did a bench press versus a cable um, fly, there's just, I'm, I'm, I'm pushing more weight than I'm going to fly, right? But the other one is this. Really, I think it has more to do with the central nervous system. If you tense a muscle as hard as you can, it will contract harder when other muscles contract at the same time. So I've used this example in old episodes, but uh, if you were to squeeze your hand as hard as you could, yeah. but have to keep everything else relaxed, including your face, so everything has to remain relaxed, and all you do is squeeze your hand as hard as you could, and then repeated it, but allowed yourself to squeeze your body and tense your face, you would squeeze stronger the second time around. So I think compound lifts just turn the CNS on more. Yeah. So you're going to activate more muscle fibers. It maximizes overall. your force output, which is a, a tangible number that shows your capacity. So your body's going to respond to that higher number of force output versus a smaller number. Yes. And so that's in turn, uh, you know, going to communicate that fact that you need to build more muscle. I, you know, I've always tried to, to come up with a great analogy. I, I still have never come up with anything better than I think what Sal the speaker, yeah. yep, said years and years ago on this podcast about using the analogy of speakers and the amplifier and speakers being your muscles, your ample, the amplifier being at CNS. Anybody that understands uh, what makes a speaker or, you know, or a stereo system work it's the, you know, the amplifier the, and the speakers are the two main components of what mm -hmm. makes loud music come out of there. And, you know, you, if you have big, huge subwoofers and you have a weak amp, you only get so much. That's from, right. Uh, There's from, no potential. Nothing comes out. So much that's, out. Right, that's right. And same thing goes the other way. You have this crazy, uh, you know, amp, but then you have these tiny little speakers. You, you, you get the most out of those little speakers, but there's so much more potential, right? So they both kind of work synergistically to with each other and right. they both add value to each other. And so if you think of every exercise has a, a an attribute to making the speakers better, an attribute that makes the amplifier better, um, when you think about compound lifts, it gives so much to both. Where an isolation exercise is really good with, you know, focusing on the speaker and the muscle side, but not the greatest with, on the CNS side. So you just don't, if I had to like, you know, an exercise had a value to it and I'd have to say, oh, this gets four points and this gets four points, or there's total eight points to give up. This one gets four, this one gets four and a good compound lift. This one might get, you know, only three or two. And then this one only gets one in these isolation exercise. Yeah. And so I just think that that's what is missing when trying to communicate to people uh, why you still want to do compound lifts, even for the arms. Yeah, you're, you're, if, if, however many muscle fibers you can activate in your biceps, they will, more will activate because you're also activating other muscles in the body. And it's just the way the central nervous system works. It fires more powerfully when it's firing to more places than when it's firing to just one isolated place. Now, unless you're super advanced, because uh, very advanced bodybuilders probably can do this. 
99% of people can't do this. It's like, I'm not gonna be able to activate my chest as much with the fly as I can with the bench press. And so compound lifts just deliver incredible results. And this is true for the biceps and the triceps as well. Then we talked about elbow position. Changing the elbow position of exercise makes a muscle more or less stretched out. And the way that muscle fibers slide along each other, it means the, the tension is going to connect differently at different points. Mm -hmm. So a preacher curl versus a barbell curl versus a concentration curl, they're going to work the bicep a little bit differently. And then tension points, right? Do, is the weight heaviest at the top of the movement or at the bottom of the movement or in the middle Mid of the movement, point, yeah. depending on where, you know, if I'm using a machine or free weights or my elbow position. Um, and then lastly, hand position. This one I wanted to cover because a lot of people understand hand, like how you rotate your hand affects how you work your bicep. So you could, if your hands are neutral or facing down or facing up, right? Supinated, pronated or neutral, works the bicep differently. In fact, if you look at your arm while you rotate your hand, you'll see your bicep moving around because part of what your bicep's job is to do is to rotate the hand. Triceps, no effect whatsoever. So you, mm. you, could, you could do all the rotating your hand and grips or whatever all you want, but if your elbow position is the same place, it doesn't matter. So I've seen people do like tricep press down, oh, yeah. 50 different handles. It's all tricep press down. And, and, the, and I think the, one of the most important things to note on that is the, is the novelty of manipulating the strength curve. Yes. Yeah. So if you always trained your biceps with your elbows positioned in the same place all the time, well, then the body gets adapted to that. And then, which is also, by the way, why, and we haven't even listed off what the first exercise is for the bicep, which is a chin up, right? It's a yeah, great, oh yeah. it's a great compound lift for the bicep. A nice supinated grip or reverse and, grip. And chin part up. of why I think it's so awesome, it's one of the things. Obviously, it, to the point how we've been making this whole time is it's a compound lift, and so you're getting this big central nervous system thing. I also think it's because it's a very uh, novel place to do a bicep curl from. So very, very few machines or actually very few people yeah. do bicep curls like this, Yeah, you yeah. know, pulling down in this position. There's Fully stretched out position. Just not a lot of, there's just not a lot of position and, and it's not traditional. Traditional is you grab dumbbells or a barbell and you stand up or you sit down and you curl by your side or maybe you're on a preacher bench in front of you. Rarely ever do you curl that position. So not only are you curling that position, but you're then also doing a compound. Yeah. That's why I think it's a banger. Yeah, supinated grip chin-ups, if done properly, which I'll get to in just a second, is one of the hardest, heaviest, most incredible bicep exercises you'll ever do. It is the mass builder of bicep exercises, and nobody does them for biceps, except for very rarely do I see this. And I remember seeing this for the first time. I saw somebody with phenomenal, incredible arms years ago doing these, and I saw the way he was doing them. I thought he had bad form on his pull-ups or his chin-ups, but he told me, no, this is for my biceps, and then it made all sense. So when you do your chin-ups or, or your supinated grip for your back, you want to lead with your chest, stick your chest out, and really pull with the lats. When you're doing this for your biceps, you roll your shoulders forward, and you're curling yourself up. You're squeezing the biceps close, on the, to, those close to your body, and it will destroy your biceps. In fact, you know, 80% of people listening to this won't be able to do more than three or four reps in that way, uh, which makes it a heavy bicep exercise. You could use a, a an assisted uh, you know weight machine like a Gravitron or whatever, assist the pull-up machine to do this. But give this a try, that supinated grip at the top where you're curling on the way up and you're not leading with your chest but kind of bringing your chest down so you're getting full bicep squeeze. This is gnarly and will take the place of like five other bicep exercises. It's also a really, okay, so um, isolation curls, machine curls, breacher curls, I just don't ever see myself getting a lot of value out of doing singles, doubles, or triples. Oh yeah! But this is actually an exercise for your biceps that I could go in and do two or three, two or three reps. That's it. Yeah, and it's okay. Uh huh. Like it's going to stimulate the bicep like a whole, like it's a whole different. Oh yeah, weighted. It's yes, it's gnarly. Yeah. So the, it, there's not a lot of things that I will do in the single, double, triple range for the bicep or the tricep. This is, and then the, the tricep example you have coming next is what I would also uh, yes. would, would say this. These are ones that I would even consider doing three reps for. Totally. Uh, loaded. Like a strength exercise. Yes, yes. yes. absolutely. By the way, uh, arm wrestlers do these all the time. Arm wrestlers, we do these two arms and one arm. And uh, I mean, we don't have to argue how arm wrestlers have incredible biceps oh, yeah. and forearms. All right, for the triceps for a compound lift. Hey, sorry to interrupt. Look, we have a free guide, how to get rid of flabby arms. In it, we break it down. We give you the steps on how to get your arms from flabby to sculpted and toned. Again, it's totally free. Here's the code. Go get it. Parallel bar dips uh, is one of my favorites. Uh, it's a bodyweight exercise. You can add weight around your waist 
Um, it is uh, responsible for some of the most amazing looking triceps you'll find anywhere. And I, I, you know, a close grip bench press would come close. Yeah. But I think because of the position of the bench press and how people have to get in position with their with their wrists, and mm -hmm. I think dips on a on a parallel bar uh, are better. And your elbows need to be in in your body, and you need to sit somewhat upright as you go down. The more you lean forward with your chest, the more your elbows flare out. The more it's a chest exercise. If you're somewhat upright, elbows in at your sides. Now it's a tricep exercise. And this one, like you said, Adam, you can go heavy on this. You know, like three, four, five reps, weight, uh, weight around your waist. And it just it does an incredible job on the tricep. Yeah, you know, you know, you know I've always been a huge uh, uh, fan of the you know incline uh, close grip yeah. bench press for my triceps. Um, it it did wonders for my arms, uh, but I still would agree with you that this still takes the cape for it. And I th I think that has to do with the ability for you to kind of contour to your body yeah. more. It's because you're not you're not on this holding this fixed bar mm -hmm. versus I can move, I can flare my elbows in or out, I can grab a wider or more narrow. On like parallel bars, uh, I also can go really deep. So yeah. for every bit you can go down with the yeah. bar, you can go even deeper. That's my favorite part of it. It's in the deep range it, of motion, yeah, potential, so incredible range of motion, uh, motion coming out of that. So it's probably why it wins mm -hmm. just barely over the the uh, close grip bench press. Yeah, but I and would I would say. I would do this uh, and make sure you get a real hard full extension squeeze at the top. That's how you can get those triceps. To really get activated. Now, those, by the way, those two exercises I just said, you can just if all you ever those. did those, yeah. yeah, literally, if you just did those, well, we, you, mean, would, you, would, you would develop great One arms. of the most viral videos we ever did is an example of us discussing this, and there was, a, and our editors back then attached the video to a gymnast. Do you remember? Yes. Mm -hmm. So there was a gymnast, and that we were making the case for bicep curls, for, for pull-ups for biceps. Yes. And they're a great example. I mean, you have gymnasts, and not to say that none of them ever do any bicep exercises, but no. But the the, the strength training exercise they do in relation to what we're talking about are pull ups, chin ups, pull ups all the time. Now That's they right. do their iron cross, which is also incredible tension on the biceps. But gymnasts have incredible biceps. They almost oh, always have. Well, their biceps. muscle up is basically both of those combined. Yes, so you I mean, have the false grip, and you're you're getting it really close that's right. here, and then you transition into a dip that's low. There's so. very few sports or things that we talk about that you can point to a body part or a body on them and be like, oh, they'll every one of them like this. I guess there are some like sprinter. You'll never see a yeah. sprinter with skinny legs, right, 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 right? right? You'll never see like not at the elite level, right? You'll never right. see an elite level sprinter with small legs. You'll never see a gymnast with small arms like no. they'll always have muscular defined buff arms and you can't you cannot not attribute that to the pull-ups and the dips but, that they have to do in their routine and you're totally right justin the 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 way that they do their um chin up is uh the way that i described earlier on their parallel on their yeah. rings it's it's very close because they have to come into the bar it's a transitionary move it's yeah, a transit so you gotta keep it in really tight all bicep i've worked on that for quite a bit it's yeah. really difficult yeah but the, but but dips parallel bar dips for for your triceps and it's great because you don't need a lot of equipment for something like this um, and it's just one of the best acts. There was, there was, a, there was a period of time where this is all I did, uh, for my triceps and I always got great results, um, from this. Do you have any old beefy video of you doing that? I'd love to see a video uh, of you. I remember when you were doing some. that stuff. Yeah, I probably you to, do. You have to dig in the archive and I see if you got some really old. old. I'll, I'll be like, yeah, I remember when you were doing those young face, yeah, yes. <laughs> bad, bad teeth. Young yeah. face. <laughs> <laughs> okay. so. All right. Next up. These are exercises where your elbow is by your side. So for biceps, now this exercise you're gonna you're gonna recognize. Everybody talks about barbell curls. There are they are great basic muscle building exercise for the biceps. And the starting position and even through the rep is elbows by your side. Now barbell curls, uh, most of the tension is at the middle of the rep. So when you're doing a curl, obviously at the bottom it's not very heavy because you're not going directly against gravity. But once you come halfway up, this is where the bar is about as heavy as it's going to get until you pass it, and then it gets a little lighter. So the the tension point is mid uh, contraction, and the elbows are at your side. So the biggest point that I have to make with this this uh, this point or this exercise, um, and I'm doing this right now, talking about this on the docu series right now, is uh, you know quality is so important. Yes. Yeah. Um, this is an exercise that is a staple exercise for biceps, but it's also one that is often cheated. Where people uh, roll their shoulders or rock Swing their it, rock yeah. their elbows to get up, yeah. and because of the point Sal is making of like this when it's when you're right at the middle is like where you're at peak stress on the bicep. If you use momentum to get through that part, 
uh, it turns into a shoulder exercise. Yeah. Shoulder and forearms end up working as much or more than the biceps do, and all in pursuit of saying, oh, I curl the 35s or the 45s now. It's like, man, this exercise, I used to do this really strict. Pull my shoulders back. I used to love doing it in a split stance, and I would just take my time real slow with the tempo and keeping those what a, elbows stiff. What a good point, because when you have the, you have the reverse grip chin-ups, you have the parallel bar depths, and so long as your form is good, going heavy is really important with those. With this this exercise, barbell curls, you're better off making the exercise feel heavy. That's right. Yeah. In fact, somebody who can make 40 pounds feel like 80 pounds will get better results than someone who takes 80 pounds and tries to make it feel like 40 pounds right. with, with bad technique and form. So whatever weight you can you can make feel heavy and stay within your desired rep range, which is probably going to be anywhere between, I don't know, 8 to 12 or 15, you want to go as light as you can to make it feel as heavy as you can. Um, that's the best results you're going to get out of a barbell curl. I, I want sure. you guys to explain that a little bit more for the functional people out there. Yes. Uh, just mainly because like, if you think of it, there's a way to intentionally make something more challenging, more intense. Yes. And you can do that by adding a lot more tension within that rep, but maintaining really good form and focus. Yeah. So obviously no rocking of the body, standing very you know steady and straight, and then squeezing the hell out of the biceps all the way up all the way down, never losing tension the entire time. Even at the full extension, I'm not relaxing my arms, but I'm keeping tension in the bicep. And at the top, I'm squeezing my biceps at the top. And the tempo is nice and controlled. Four seconds down, two seconds up. It's yeah. funny you brought that up. Did you see the comment that was in the on the my bench press technique when I was teaching that on the docuseries? Oh, no. So a functional guy got on there, right? And I, you know the, where I'm, I'm explaining an incline press, how much I like it because yeah. it retracts and depresses the shoulders because of gravity and you want to be in that fixed position as you press. You don't want to roll the shoulders forward and engage the shoulders right. and the triceps in a movement like that. Well, a functional guy gets on there and is just like, well, this is like old, this is old information or whatever. And I made a comment about why would you want, why would you limit the movement in the shoulders? You know, functional would mean yeah, you want to, no. and I'm like, well, no, I bench press to build muscle. I do things like Indian clubs and handcuff right. rotation. There's exercises I do for shoulder mobility and shoulder health. Yeah. There's exercises I do. Better to, tools for that job. That's right. And then there's exercises that I do to build muscle. So here's an example. What I would say to a functional guy is like, we're doing barbell bicep curls, not for the functionality. No, we're doing it to build your biceps. That's it. And if you want to build your biceps, we want to keep strict, tight form. If Hold you, up. If you're a functional guy and you're talking trash about a bicep curl, <laughs> yeah. you got you to like really yeah, it's, dig it's, deep. It's not in the it's not in the top you know, 50 exercises of functional exercise. It is specifically a muscle growth hypertrophy exercise. That's right. Yeah. So do it like you're supposed to, not trying to make it feel light, but rather trying to make it feel heavy. Right. Now for the triceps, elbows to the side, tricep press down. So this is a good classic. Everybody's done this. You can use a bar, you can use a rope, whatever works better. I like a V-bar. I like a V-bar because it allows for the, the most uh, weight that I could use on the bar. It's a nice neutral position for my hands. Some people prefer a rope. It actually literally doesn't matter. I will say this, a reverse grip, probably the worst grip to do a press down because you hold on to it. it's hard to hold on to. Yeah. And by the way, if you feel it more in your triceps with the reverse grip, it's just because you slowed the rep down because you couldn't hold on to anything that's, that yeah. was heavier. Yeah. But yeah, just a straight up, press down, full extension. Now I see the, the one mistake I see people with tricep press downs is a doing kind of what I said with the barbell curls. They try to make the weight feel lighter by leaning forward and kind of turning it into a strange looking push up. or two, they don't come all the way up. Mm -hmm. When you're doing a pr tricep press down, don't stop at, you know, at parallel. It's not from here down. It's all the way up all the way down. You'll get so much more of the exercise if you do it that way. It, when we're doing these exercises that are isolation exercises, it is about feeling the muscle through the entire movement. Yes. When we're doing compound, we want to move weight. We want to move weight. We want to, and that's, so we get those, those Different great- Different intention. Yeah. Yes. And so the, I think for sure what you're mentioning about tricep pushdowns, it is the number one thing. I just was in the gym. I was at Fitness 19. I made the comment. I was in there. That's where all the high school kids work out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, and there's a group of like high school kids like that use the tricep pushdown right mm. before me. And I get over there and I come in behind them and they're probably like half my size, right? But half my age Bunch too. Of broccoli cuts. Right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Actually, I made a point to Sal. Do you know that the style is back what I used to wear when I was 20 yeah. lifting? So the, the now the teenagers coming up, 
It's the big triple X shirts with the belt on oh, and the yeah. baggy like like baggy pants, big old huge triple. It's come around finally. Yes, okay. I, and I, that was like my favorite. So I yeah. can't wait to wear that. The feel in fashion. And the <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, you know these guys, the, the, the young yeah. guys, right? Yeah. I'm saying, and, and uh, they were just doing it right before me, and I come right behind them, and then they moved over to the the seat of row next. And you to go me, lighter, so, and I cut the weight like in half. You know, suck my elbows in, pull my shoulders back, uh -huh. resist the negative on the way up, pause, get that full good stretch all the way down. Like, and I could see him like eyeballing me while I'm sitting there doing it. It's like, man, that's a, when you're doing an exercise like that, uh, stacking the weight to stack the weight so your delts and your chest gets involved yeah. defeats the purpose yeah. of why I'm doing that. If okay. I want, if I want chest and delts, I'll go do incline bench press. Right. If if I'm over here trying to work my triceps, then I'm going to choose a weight that I can hold extremely right. strict form that I can keep tension in that muscle the entire full range of motion. So that's right, full range of motion with both those exercises. That's right. Uh, so next we have the elbows in front. Now, the best exercise for the biceps, for the elbows in front, are preacher curls. So preacher curls, you're on a preacher bench. Your elbows are in front of you. Your The back of your arm is sitting on a bench. And what you need to do here, there's a couple of important things to, to pay attention to with this exercise. First off, most of the tension in the preacher curls at the bottom, because of the way a free weight is set up on a preacher bench, the bottom position is where it's heaviest. Mm -hmm. So don't avoid that part of the rep. Lots of people do a preacher curl and they avoid the hardest part. They cut short because they know if they go down too far, they're not gonna be able to get the weight up. That means go lighter. Because this is all the work. Down this down. exercise is amazing with lightweight. I love grabbing a 40 pound barbell. Okay, people see me in the gym, they expect me to grab a heavier one. I love grabbing a 40 pound barbell and getting real full extension at the bottom, even holding at the bottom with tension. By the way, some studies will show that a muscle under tension while stretched or lengthened causes more muscle growth. So, so you are missing out on the most growth potential of this exercise by far by not doing that full extension. The second mistake people make is they bring their shoulders up and back as they're doing the curl yeah, rocking the in order to get the bar up. Keep everything in position. Your entire back of your arm on the on the pad, and then just move, just bend the elbow, but both, fully extend it. Both those mistakes caused by loading the bar with more than what That's you right. need. Heavy. I mean, and you literally just uh, described the first one, right, with the stopping. What I did as a kid, hundred percent. Oh yeah. I my buddy and I <laughs> cared so much about getting from the, oh, the tens you. to the quarters to the thirty fives. Right. You know, we cared about that more than anything else. And we were you we were shorting that that range mm -hmm. of motion up just so we could get the heavier weight up. And it's like, man, you were missing out on the greatest part of that exercise. And now, same thing. You'll see me go in the gym and I'll put the little tens on there. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And go full range of motion, even pause in the stretch you get position. A crazy come back pump. Up. Yes. You're far better off doing that. You're gonna get so much more of that exercise. And then it also keeps the shoulder out of it. If you find yeah. yourself rocking the shoulder right. and, and you'll feel it a lot of times you'll feel it in that front delt when you're when you're curling with the shoulders and so again we're in a fixed position we're doing an isolation exercise and, and, and just to help just to help you know 99.9 percent .9 of people don't care how much weight you have on the bar and the people that do care how much weight you have on the bar that matter care when you do an exercise that matters. They don't care how much you curl. Exactly. They want to see how much you could deadlift yeah. or squat. squat. That's when they'll pay attention. Deadlift or squat. Yeah. But nobody cares or for these bench. other exercises. And also, last point, you shouldn't care. Who cares what they... You're there to develop incredible looking arms. Do it the right way because you could always make it easier by doing it the wrong way so it doesn't even count, right? All right, for triceps, elbows in front of the body, uh, skull crushers. I love skull crushers. Now, they're called skull crushers because traditionally the bar comes down to your forehead. Now I prefer bringing the bar behind my head. So I like to bring my elbows back a little further, coming back behind my head, more of a full range of motion. It also gives me a little bit more of a stretch in the tricep. I get a fuller range of motion by doing it that way. And that's just the way I've taught, uh, I used to teach my clients. So I, I taught this also, this was on one of the first days. Um, I like doing the body weight version of that on a bar. On a bar, yeah. Love I that. love yeah, that yeah. for that exact reason because yeah. it rolls the elbow yep, and you get that yep. full entire stretch on that. Or I like doing uh, the dumbbells. Dumbbells so, are great because you can get a full range of motion because it goes next to your head. Yes. Like that, I'm actually, as a kid, I always did the, the, the yes. camber. I mean, yeah. but as I got older, I realized the benefits of the full range of yeah. motion like that, the getting the full stretch on the tricep, and then moved more to either body weight where I rock my body all the way through it or using dumbbells so I could 
come all the way by my side. Totally. Point being, though, the same rule applies to this as the, the, the last. Perfect form. Yeah. yeah. Elbow strict by your by your side like that, come, getting the full stretch, taking your time. Uh, getting and again, this is another one where you see people shorten the reps up. Oh, yeah. You know they don't; they just come down to ninety or less, and then they go back up and extend versus letting it come all the way down in that good deep stretch. So let me put it this out. way: if you went as heavy as you could with a half rep, and then went as heavy as you could with the full rep, even though they both felt heavy, the full rep will build more muscle. Even so you're though you're using, wasting and, your time. and you're using less weight, and you're yeah. safer, and yeah. you're using less weight yeah. as a result. Yeah. Um, so skull crusher is definitely one of the best. All right. So then I threw in some extra exercises because I gave you three exercises for your biceps and triceps, all awesome. Then I threw in some extras that I thought would give you something that the other ones didn't. So for the biceps, I wanted to include uh, a, a curling exercise where the hands were not supinated. Supinated is when your palms are facing up. So most bicep exercises are like this. But like I said in the, earlier in the episode, rotating your hands is also the job of the biceps. And so curling a weight with your hands not in the same you know rotated position works the bicep differently. Hey, real quick, sorry to interrupt you. Look, we have a sale this month on some programs. We have a beginner program, Map Starter. It's 50% off. Then we have a bundle that's different. It's called the Starter Bundle that includes our most popular programs. That's also 50% off. So if you're interested in that, just click on the link at the top of the description below. Now it's brought to you by a sponsor, Plunge. If you've heard of the benefits of cold water therapy, immersion therapy, this is where you dump yourself or get yourself into freezing cold water. Your body adapts and acclimates. You increase the catecholamines that burn body fat, increase alertness, reduce inflammation. It's all real. The studies show it. It does support all the things that they say that it does. Anyway, one of the problems is the pain in the butt to get a big tub, fill it with ice, the whole, whole deal. There's a company called Plunge that makes them, that filters the water, keeps it cold, and it's affordable, and they look nice. Go check them out and get yourself a discount. Go to plunge.com, use the code MINDPUMP, get $150 off. All right, here comes the show. Hammer curls, I like hammer curls for two reasons. One, it trains the biceps in a neutral grip position. Mm -hmm. It also works this muscle called the, the brachioradialis on the top of the forearm. Very important muscle. Uh, for function, also very aesthetic. Uh, when people have well-developed lower arms, typically it's the breaker radialis that people notice. And lastly, this hammer curl position, it's very functional. Typically yeah. when you're grabbing things and picking things up, it's this is the position. Arguably the one of the most uh, functional grips. Yes. Like, and it's, it, you don't get a lot of opportunities to, to be in a neutral grip position mm -hmm. in terms of like being in the gym. Like there's some pull-up bars that like they have handle yeah. grips for that, but to, to be able to curl uh, with that position, it definitely translates to so many things. Yes, yes. And again, this is a favorite with arm wrestlers. I have referenced them earlier, but when you look at uh, the strength sports where you have athletes that are not bodybuilders, um, who has some of the best biceps? Yeah, arm wrestlers are, are way up there. And they probably hammer curl more than they than they do traditional curl. Do you guys typically uh, intermittently uh, replace this with another one of the bicep exercises? So let's say you're doing yes. traditional mm -hmm. dumbbell curls by your side. You've done that for the last few weeks mm -hmm. and stuff like that. It's like, you know what? I have an interrupted. I tend to use hammer curls as an interrupter to my uh, like traditional bicep curls that are bicep exercises. You know, I do hammer curls a little bit more often than that, but that's mainly because uh, I, it, when I did jujitsu, judo, a lot of the gripping was in yeah. this position here. And when I had to pull on someone's gi, my forearm was, it was never supinated. It was like this. So I needed a strong, I need to be strong in the neutral. Yeah. Position. I just I noticed just anytime I was in the grip, like intensive uh, type of exercise, if I hadn't been doing, haven't been throwing those into the routine, uh, I would get like terrible cramping and oh, like, yeah. you know, it would just like speak to me. I get knots there. So the more consistent I was throwing hammer mm -hmm. curls and it helped a lot. Now for triceps, the extra exercise is an overhead tricep extension. You can do this with the dumbbell. You do this with a barbell. You can do this with cables. Now, the important thing with this exercise is the stretch. So this is one of the few exercises you'll ever get a tricep stretch, an actual stretch in, especially the long head of the tricep because of where it attaches. In fact, if you were to stretch your tricep, that's probably the stretch you would do with your elbow up next to your head. Um, now, muscles under tension in a stretch position really grow. When they compare tension on a muscle that's not stretched versus stretched, the stretch position tends to produce more muscle growth. So what's my point with this? When you do these, don't cut your reps short. The big mistake I see people doing with this is like the other, yeah, all yeah. the other ones is they stop short. It's like, you're why do this exercise if you're not going to get the stretch? Go down as far as you can, get that stretch on the triceps, then come all the way up. 
that's the way to do the exercise. Yeah, pick a weight that you can do that with, or you're missing out on the best part of that exercise for sure. 100%. All right, we've got some questions here. Uh, the first one is, how many sets per week should I do for arms? Yeah, that's a great question. So you'll see typically on studies, total sets per body part per week. Did you, but sorry to interrupt yeah. you, but did you see the video I sent you that Brandon Carter did that no. also oh. uh, Dr. Mike Isretel actually went over some like new studies that no, actually, yeah, they actually, uh, it's a little bit higher volume. Like for I peak, saw that study. Yeah, it's for peak, I right? Did see that and it's, I don't think it's the average person. No, but. and it was a short period of time. Yeah. Yeah, so you can definitely ramp up volume in a short period of time and see some gains. Yeah. But generally speaking, overall, this is also based off our experience, guys. Like, yeah, how yeah, often yeah, did yeah. you train a client and do more than like nine, 12 sets for arms, even your, especially your advanced? No, team? I just wanted no. to make sure I made that point because I know that that, that conversation I've is happening it. in our they space. They did right one now. where it was like 40 sets or yes, 50 sets. Yes, yeah. And they showed that there's positive. And I think it's important to our listeners understand, like, you wouldn't, there's no reason for somebody who is a even moderately experienced lifter to jump all the way yeah, to that much volume. And even if you did, so here's what's important about what we're, what we're talking about here. So we're going to talk about how many sets per week. We'll talk about the data and our experience, but also consider that you could go outside of this for short sprints. And that's where you'll see some of the value of these more extreme, uh, you know, applications. It's not all the time. So there's a study that shows 40 sets, for a body part is great, right? Let's do that for a full year and then see what happens. For most people, that'll fall. Yeah, or let's do that during a the, in the context of a stressful week with your family and things like that. Like a like normal that. week for most people, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So typically, you're looking at nine sets per, you know, for biceps or triceps up to maybe as high as, let's say, 15 or 18 sets. Yeah. Now, there's two ways to do this. Uh, I know this wasn't part of the question, but I think it's far more effective to break those sets up into multiple workouts than to do them all in one workout. Mm -hmm. I think it's way better to do three sets for biceps three days a week than it is to do nine sets in one workout and just work on one. No, day. it's the a, recovery, I, the performance of it, all better. those things. The, the way I would look at this is uh, you're saying a number nine to 18. I'm going to start a client at nine and it's going to be three times a week. So three, That's so right. three on Monday through. So if we're talking about arms, Three sets of arms on for each muscle group. Those so three bicep, three uh, tricep on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Right. And we're going to run that for a while, and they're going to see great gains just from that. And then maybe we'll we'll inch up to twelve, and then so basically That's adding right. a, adding a set to each of those days. Then we're going to evaluate how their body's responding. Maybe we ramp up to fifteen another month and, or two later. And let me take it a step further. I wouldn't even go from nine to twelve because what we tend to do is think you have to do the same amount of sets per week. Sure. I you always just have I, one day. That's it. Yeah, Four yeah. sets on Monday now, and three and three sure, you know sure. type of deal that's the best way to kind of scale this up and then back it back down you know as you start to feel like you're doing too much but that's generally how many sets you want to do per week plus also consider biceps and triceps are getting worked when you work shoulders and, and back and chest so they're getting lots of additional volume and even though this wasn't part of the question i want to add this to this point since we did a good job of going through all the elbow positions what a great way to do this is take those exercises monday you do one elbow position wednesday right. you do their elbow, elbow position and then uh, friday you yes. do the other elbow position so now you're you're maximizing the elbow positions of the bicep and the tricep and and or a compound lift day and then you're spreading out the sets over totally. over three days Next question is, uh, is it necessary to do isolation exercises? It is not necessary. No. Now, you'll probably- I'm once, losing proof of that. Yeah, <laughs> once you- Yeah, that's true. Look at- Well, so are, so are CrossFit. Yeah. CrossFit yeah, athletes. Yeah, yeah, for sure. CrossFit, I mean, I think maybe some started to do bicep it's, curls because all the tears that were happening think, and stuff. Yeah. But I mean, they, they built some pretty killer physiques just from deadlifting, pull-ups, you know, squatting and stuff it's like that. probably a good idea. Yeah. You know, like it, it, in that regard too for performance and even like power lifters as well. It's just like yep. they've noticed, you know, if there's a weakness there, it's susceptible to injury. Yeah, but you don't have to. You know, you, you'll get 90% of, of the gains you're ever going to get by never doing an isolation exercise. But adding another 10% with some isolation exercises is not nothing. So I think if you're a total beginner, I mean, when I would train beginners, people who are working out in the first year, by the way, that's a beginner, your first year of consistent strength training. So beginner isn't just, I just started today. It's literally, I've only been working out for three months or four months consistently. So yeah, you're strong, you feel good in the gym, you're still a beginner. You're a beginner for about a year, maybe even up to two or three years, I would consider someone a beginner. In that period of time, uh, I, I would have people never do an isolation exercise for a full year. It was like all compound lifts and everything developed phenomenal. It's after that when the isolation exercises probably start to get more important. The next question is, what do you think about BFR? Great Blood tool. flow restriction training or occlusion training. This is a great tool. A yep. really weird, novel way of inducing muscle growth. And so for people who aren't familiar, if I was going to do this on my arms, I would take a knee wrap 
and I would wrap it around the top of my arm tight enough to where I could feel the blood Just being occluded. It. Yeah. Right now, not not so tight where I go numb, but tight enough to where I feel like I'm occluding some blood and I'm getting like a little build up there. And then you go and you do some sets of biceps and triceps. And what you'll find is because the, the blood can't pump out, <laughs> yeah. because you're occluding, so the blood can't come out, all this waste buildup happens in the bicep and the tricep. And the burn is, for lack of a better term, intense. It's yeah. actually way worse than intense. It's nasty. Yeah. And your strength goes down real fast. Like by set two and three, you're using weights that you could normally juggle. And the studies show that this induces muscle growth. Do I think this is uh, in the same universe as traditional exercise? No. no. But as a tool to like- As a novel tool, yes. as, as a way to rehab, it's phenomenal mm -hmm. uh, in terms of like if you're limited in range of motion, but you still want to be able to stimulate your muscles and build strength there, you know, this is a great option to have. Totally. Uh, well, there's two, there's two main ways that hypertrophy happens, right? You have the sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, which is the volumizing of the, the muscle bellies, right? Sending fluid and everything yeah. there, which this is maximizing that. Then there's the, you, the tearing, the breaking down of lifting. Muscle fibers. Yeah, the mu muscle fibers, which you get from heavy loading and lifting. So I think why it doesn't compare to traditional strength training is you can, with traditional strength training, you can get the best of both worlds. I can get a sarcoplasmic pump yeah. and I can break down. Yeah, I've experimented with it and it doesn't, it's not the same. No. I've tried replacing, you know, traditional. But it's a great it. way to compliment. Yeah. I, I'm a big you fan. You throw in a little bit of it, you'll see yeah. some gains. And we wrote a guide on this a long time ago. So if you look up Mind Pump Guide, BFR, is it a BFR no, guide or occlusion guide? guide? Occlusion. Yeah, we have we have a guy for this. We also have a free video on our YouTube channel that Sal, you might find old Sal and Adam on there. We did that was oh, one of young our first Sal, Adam, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, at our, look at our kids. It's like my son is doing this <laughs> <laughs> video. But yeah, BFR, very interesting. I think as you become more advanced, it can become more valuable. And for rehab purposes, it's actually pretty good. All right, I know you liked that episode. If you did, check this one out. 30% body fat. For men, this is way too high. This is actually a bit high for women as well. So in today's episode, we're talking about how you can go from 30 to 10. What is 10% body fat? This is when you have a visible six pack. Can you go from 30 to 10%? Yes, it's possible, but not if you guess along the way. So we're gonna talk about how you can do that in today's episode. Now there's a huge range, right? Of like body types. Yes. Some people can run uh, a little bit heavier uh, and, or a little bit higher body.